All right, Fuzz Pie Guy here. I'm going to show you how to set up uh, a Raspberry Pi to do CPU mining on it. Now, this is mainly for fun. I mean, I do have a couple that's just mining away for just whatever because I just have some orange pies laying around and a banana pie. And I'm testing out right now the uh, Atomic Pie, which is doing very well. Uh, give and take, I'm getting almost up to 600 hashes a second. With the Atomic Pie running uh, four threads. So, I'm kind of impressed with that. But anyway, back to the purpose of this. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you how to set a miner up. Uh, on a Raspberry Pi, I'm using the Pi 3. Now, like I said, you can use pretty much about anything, computers, whatnot. Uh, you can use Orange Pies and Raspberry Pis, Banana Pies, Atomic Pi, uh, whatever you feel like. So, faster the uh, computer, obviously, the better. But, uh, so, first thing we need to do is just install some dependencies. So, I already have this installed, but we need to install the following dependencies here. If I, uh, do it right. So, let's try this again. So once everything's installed, we can move right on with uh, downloading the uh, the miner itself. So we're just going to use git. Like I said, I already have it installed. So we'll just cd into the uh, directory there. Then the f next command is we just need to build it so we can just let that run uh, yours may be a little bit different because mine already built and, and all that and after it's done building there's one more command to run and we're done setting uh, the miner up to uh, to get this up and working now the next thing is is finding a pool so we need to find a pool uh, the one I currently use is no longer accepting new users so they recommend some other pools but uh, I came across this one it's pretty much laid out like the one that I use uh, <clears throat> But uh, I kind of like it, so I'm testing it right now with a uh, an old laptop that I have, just to see if I like that pool any better or not. So now that it's done building, we need to run the following command up here, and when that's complete, we're done with that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to sign up. So if you go to this following pool here, now you can pick other pools, but you need to make sure you pick the right one to in order to work for what we want to do. So for example, this one here. Uh, so if you go to the following address here and just go over to guest then sign up, it'll come up like this. You pick a username, password, an email, then a four-digit PIN. Accept, then the register button, then you need, they'll send you an email, you just need to confirm. <clears throat> so once you do all that and you log in, you can go right under your account and set up your uh, worker, it's called. So... And if you want to look at the pool without signing in, you obviously can. And uh, the blocks, 
you know, whatever you feel. Um, so, so once you sign in and you uh, click on account that will be over here on the left side, you want to click on workers, then you need to set up a four digit pin for each worker and a name, a user for each worker. So depending on how many you need, you could just set up whatever. So once you're done with that, which is pretty straightforward, we need to <clears throat> figure out something here. I had something up, but it disappeared. All right, so if we come back to here, um, we're going to be running this here, this port here, 3332, because, you know, obviously the pie isn't all that great. So if you can see right here, this is for the uh, pies and whatnot. So we can just copy this command here and go over to your terminal now you may have to put the following in front of it because to get it to work now you can let all this alone out through here so the username is whatever you make it so if you make your username, you know, we'll just say test. Then if you rename, when you make your worker, you can name it whatever you feel like. So we could just say pi1, we'll just say. So when you make your worker, you'll see your, uh, your username will be in like, one column your worker will be in another column and it'll have a little period in between then your password is the numbers or whatnot that you came up with so we'll just say one two three four then uh, that's it you run it and obviously it ain't going to connect because um it's an invalid password and everything like that now <clears throat> We can let this file, this command, I mean, default like it is. Uh, or we can change this up a little bit. Now, it's set up for four miners. Now, if you get a lot of problems with it, you may want to go to three. You may want to go to two. Now, obviously, your hash rate's going to go down, so you're not going to make as much. It's obviously going to take you even longer. Now, if you're running a Pi 3 or a 4 or whatnot, you, you, this probably shouldn't be a problem. But if you're trying to do this on like a 0 or whatever you may be trying it on, you may have to do some different things here. You can do a, uh, make sure you have a space at the end I mean you could add this what I'm doing in here but I'm just going to add it to the end it don't make a difference so we're going to do a T a dash T which that's going to we're going to tell it how many threads to use like it's right now it's just default in the four so we can re we can do two so now as you can see it's only showing two and not four so another thing we can do is if you get a lot of connection errors like this or whatnot you may have to do something like this we can do a dash capital T because the default I think is 15 seconds so we can change this to 60 so well 10 seconds we can change it to say 60 uh, but you really shouldn't have that problem really on a 3 a pi 3 or a pi 4 
or something equivalent to that. Uh, but if you're, like I said, if you're trying this on a Raspberry Pi Zero, it's going to take you 25 years to get really anywhere. <clears throat> and you'll probably definitely have to run like one thread or whatnot. So these are option uh, things we need to do, but you may not have to worry about that. So, and the other thing you're going to have to do is when you're in your account for your pool, uh, under your account, if you go to, I think, edit account, um, you're going to see your address and stuff. So you need to uh, download a uh, wallet. So we'll just go to Veracoin. <clears throat> and as you can see, you have your Veracoin wallet and and your uh, your other wallet right here. Now I have both, but I'm having problems with the Veracoin, so I used the uh, the Varium uh, wallet, and so far I've been doing fine, and it's been working. It's transferred my uh, funds and everything. So if you do use this one, you may have to download the bootstrap itself and put it in the right folder uh, because it takes forever to sync this one here only took a matter of minutes seconds compared to days of this one and it still didn't get nowhere so in order to do that I'll just show you a short short clip of this but you I have a video on how to do it so if you just do a, a slash downloads and scroll to the bottom, you can download the Veracoin bootstrap right here or the Varium right here. And as you can see, it's a pretty big file size. This one here, not so much. But uh, you need a wallet so you can transfer your, uh, your uh, money. So, well, anyway, hopefully this helps out and uh, gets people started on how to set this up. So, sorry for the drag on of the video and the way I talk, uh, but uh, I had a question about if I could uh, make a video of this, so here it is. So if you need any help, message me up. I'll throw a link in the description to my website for the commands and whatnot on there. So you can just click there and, and get her going. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another one.